How's everybody doing this morning? Good. 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 First of all, you, I'm going to go ahead and warn y'all. See, I got this out this morning. I'm a crybaby. Uh, <laughs> Lord's doing a mighty work in me, and I'm blessed beyond blessed. Uh, hadn't always been this way. I used to when I was out serving the world. I used to be a pretty hard-hearted person. Didn't really give a care about anybody but myself. God has done work in me that just blows me away. Do I still struggle? Yes, I do. Just like everybody else. But I know where my strength comes from. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's kind of where the, he, he took, took me to this morning. And uh, as soon as I talk to Brother Jared, and, and I want to say thank, thanks to him, and thanks to you guys for allowing me the opportunity to bring God's word this morning. But as soon as I spoke to him, God began to download stuff into me. And I know where he wanted me to go. Anyway, what he's laid my heart on my heart this week is, all week long, is just how I see wonderful Christian people that's given their life to the Lord and, and serving the Lord with all that they have, yet they still struggle. And it makes you wonder why, you know, why do we, we've given our life to the Lord and why do we still struggle? Well, where he took me to this week was all the way back to Genesis. And we're going to be... Uh, in Genesis 6, we're going to start. We're going to touch on 7 and 8 just a little bit. But, uh, you know, a lot of people think when you go back to the Old Testament, especially that far back, they're like, oh, Lord, here we go. There's either one way or the other. You think, well, it's all about the law. They're going to tell me this and that and the Ten Commandments and what i got to do and this, that, and the other. Or, you know, or something like that. But the thing is, when I go back to the Old Testament, I think it all, we shouldn't do all those things. All those things the Ten Commandments said, all the law and all those things that were done, we should work towards striving to do that. But in the New Testament, we're under the law of grace. But if you read the Old Testament or know anything about the Old Testament, all the way through the Old Testament, it points to, prophesies about the coming of Jesus Amen. and the grace. So where I'm going to go to this morning, I want to start out in Genesis. Genesis 6, and I'm just going to read the whole chapter, so bear with me. Uh oh, never mind. Get my glasses real quick. Amen, brother. Amen. Can't do it without those. So I want to go to Genesis six, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to read the whole chapter. So just bear with me for a few minutes, and then I'll go from there. Genesis six. It says this. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. Then were the giants on the earth, there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts and hearts of, of one was evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man who, am I, who, I, who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot sons, Shem, Heph, and Jephthah. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits in width, 50 cubits in, it, in, in, in its height, 30 cubits. You shall make... You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it cubit from above. 
and set the door of the ark at its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself, bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth will die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your son's wife with you. And every living thing of all flesh you shall bring to two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female of the birds after their kind, of the animals after their kind, and every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. First verse, chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. <coughs> in reading that, I want to go back and I want you to notice something. I still talked about how everything in the Old Testament was the example of what was to come with, with the New Testament and with Jesus and with what he did on the cross and salvation. If you pay attention to this, it said the whole generation, everything, everybody was corrupt. The generation was corrupt. Everything was evil except for Noah. What he said about Noah? He said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Does that say that Noah was perfect? No, it says perfect in his generation. He followed after God. That was the thing. He wasn't perfect, but he believed God. He, he believed what God told him. He believed what God told him to do. So he followed after him. He chased after him. So he was perfect. So he was chosen to, you know, God was going to destroy the earth. But Noah was chosen because he followed God. And he, he walked with God. Does that sound a little bit like salvation? He was going to destroy the earth. Everybody was going to be demised. Everybody was going to see their end except for the one who God saw as righteous. It said that he wasn't perfect. It said he was perfect in his generation. He was the best one because he chose to walk with God. He chose to follow God. So everything was going to be destroyed except for Noah was the one chosen. Well, that sounds a little bit like salvation, doesn't it? It sounds like an example of salvation because everything because he chose, he got to was chose to do this. He was chose to follow God. Anyway, we go down to I'm a little nervous, so y'all pray for me. So I'm going to go over here to verse 13, chapter 7. And I'm going to read 13 through 16. It says, On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Heth, and Jephthah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his son with them, entered the ark. <coughs> they and every beast after his kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh, and in which is the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now I want you to pay attention to that right there. It said all those things, you know, all the animals and everything went into that. All of Noah's family went in there. But what does it say right there? It says the Lord shut him in. The man of God. The one that followed with God. The one that walked with God. The one that had faith in God and believed what he was going to do. Shut him in. Now can I tell y'all something today? Can you imagine what it was like on that ark? Could you imagine what Noah went through? He had two of every kind of animal from everywhere, every place. Not to mention he stuck his family on there with him, praise God. We know how that can be sometimes when he, you know, <laughs> he family. Yeah. But 
And I'm not trying to get ugly here, but can you imagine, you know, all those animals and everything going on, they had to go to the restroom somewhere. You know, it was a mess on there. You know, you imagine what Noah had to endure. He had to clean up that mess. He was the man of God. He was the one that, that God chose to do this. He was the one that had the faith to step out and build the ark and do what God told him to do. But he was shut in to a mess. You ever feel that way? You ever feel like, man, I'm serving God. I love God. I know what God's doing in my life. But man, why can't I shake this stuff off my back? Man, why can't I get rid of this stuff I'm going through? I'm going to tell you, people, I've been there. I know. I've done some things. Give you a little bit of testimony about myself just to switch over for a minute here. I'm not going to glorify what the devil done like, but I was an awful evil person at times in my life. And since I've given my life to the Lord, you know, he's blessed me in many different ways. So, yes, yeah, you can walk a victorious life on this earth. But I want to tell you something. I'm still reaping some of the crap from what I did before. That's right. Amen. And I'm going to continue to do that. There's no doubt in my mind. But I know. But I know. Where my strength comes from, I and mean, I know Amen. who's going to get me through it. So you know what? Noah was sitting on that ark, and I'd say he was doing a lot of this. He was doing a lot of this. He was shoveling the crap. You ever feel like you're shoveling a lot of crap? Who I feel like it a lot? Because you know what? I went as far in my life. I lost everything I had: my family, my job, my home. I lost everything. And and to still today. I give my life to the Lord. All that's gotten better. I walk victorious. He's with me every day, everything I go through. But I still reap some of them consequences sometimes. Sometimes I still got to do a little bit of this. Oh, yeah. I still got to do a little bit of that. Yeah. Woo, thank you, Lord. Amen. You know how, how uh, Noah got through that? And it don't just come out and say this, but I'm sure when he was doing all this and you know, cleaning up after them animals and, and keeping his family in check because it says Noah was the man that walked with God. Noah was the one that God chose. His family was there just because that was part of the plan. They had to remultiply the earth and stuff. So he had to deal with his family. And you know, they was whining and crying. Well, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. You know, what's all this about? They were whining and crying. But Noah just kept on doing this. You know how he got through it? It doesn't say this, but you know how I believe he got through it? He throw that shovel down there once in a while. He'd say, Woo! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord, because you chose me. You destroyed the whole earth. You destroyed everything in it, and you chose me. Thank you, Lord. And he prayed, and he sought after him, even in his mess, because you know what? There's two things you can do when you start, when all that crap gets up swallowing around you and trying to take you over. There's two things you can do. You can shovel, and you can praise him, or you can get out and wallow in him. Now, what are you going to do? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little fired up now. Woo! Thank you, Lord. You're doing good. Bring it, brother. Anyway, <laughs> it's about a relationship. No matter what's going on around you, as I've said. I'm not saying you can't walk a victorious life because you can't. I mean, my life has gotten so much better. He's blessed me. I got my family back. I'm sober. I got a new home. My life has changed completely. But I still go through struggles. Every once in a while, I still got to shovel a little bit. Amen. I'm going to read this. I'm going to go somewhere else just real quick. You don't have to go there. But I'm going to read it. 1 Peter 5.10 But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after after you have struggled a while perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Praise God! Ain't that what we're all going for? So let me tell you something. Any of you that are struggling, and I see it all the time. My poor mother had a stroke last March. I see her still struggling sometimes. My dad said back there, he's struggling with some lung issues. Praise God, they love God with all they are. But they still got to struggle. Yeah. But you know what? Their day is coming. Uh -huh. And it may be on this side or it may be on the other side. But one day he's coming back. 
and I want to go with him. I'm going with him. So you know what? Sometimes instead of getting down and wallow in it like we all tend to do at times, you know, we'd be honest with ourselves, instead of getting down and just wallow in it, you just got to shovel. You just got to keep shoveling. And you got to say, praise God. Thank you, I'm shoveling. Thank you, you've given me this stuff to shovel. Because I can depend on you. Because if, we did, if, you didn't, if I didn't have it, if I didn't have this mess to go through, would I depend on you? That's right. That's right. That's right. Praise God. Amen. Woo! Oh, man. All right, I want to go over now. Chapter 8. First verse of chapter 8. This kind of, I kind of wanted to do this before that last, but I'll go ahead and read it. It says, Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were in him in the ark. Can I tell you that even when you're shoveling that crap and you're in the middle of that mess and you're in the middle of all that struggle, God remembers you. He knows exactly what you're going through. Yeah. And he's right there the whole time pulling you along, guiding you along, walking with you. He's there, people. He remembers who you are. He created you. He knows every hair on your head. So God is there with you all through all of your struggles. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Cool. All right, I want to go down now to chapter 8. Verses 21 and 22, and I think it'll be the first verse of number nine. It says, And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. You see what that says, people? That was pleasing to the Lord. He stuck it out. Noah shoveled all that garbage. He dealt with his family. He went through all that stuff. And, then, and, then, and I was tip, touching the tip of the iceberg. There's no telling what that man went through on that ark. He done all that. The Lord was thrilled about it. He said it was a pleasing aroma to him. So, and then they were able to, uh, he, he said, I will not destroy the earth again. They were able to, to remultiply and start their results. There's going to be results of you doing what you do. You know, you may think you're struggling and having a hard time and you keep doing that. There's people in this church, Sister Christian here this morning, she's been going through it. I, I read her Facebook posts and stuff like that. The whole time she's going through it, she's she been praising God. Yes, right. I, Sister Melissa, she's been going through it. Mm -hmm. I know Mary Sue's been going through it. Uh, a lot of people have just been going through it, but I see them still praising God. That's what it's about, people. And you know what? I'm not the only one that sees it. Everybody sees it. So you know what it says that Noah, he was blessed after he went through all that stuff and all them things and he was shoveling up all that garbage and doing all the things that he did. He was blessed. He got to remultiply the earth. Well, you want me to tell you something? We're multiplying the heavens. When we're out there shoveling that crap and we're praising God for it and doing it, people are seeing that. That's, right. That's bringing people into the church. Mm -hmm. That's bringing people into the fold. That's bringing people into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So that's our job. Are things going to get tough? Yes, they're going to get tough. I'm a living example of that. I'm a blessed man. I'm not complaining. I'm not up here crying or anything like that. I'm happy. I'm blessed. Amen. But I go through struggles. And I'm always going to go through struggles. And a lot of it's my fault from the crap that I did before. But you just got to keep, keep on keeping on. You know, it's back to that same question. Are you going to get down and wallow in it? Or are you going to just shove on and praise God? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's about all I got this morning. I'm kind of new at this, but I know that's what the Lord asked me to bring, and that's what I brought. But I just want you to think about this morning. This altar's open. You come up here, and I'll pray for you. If you need somebody to come, if you need to come, or somebody else to come to pray for you in your seat, we'll do that. But if you're having a hard time and you're struggling,
and you're thinking about getting down and wallowing it, I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Get up and praise God for the struggle. Amen. Because I'm living proof that, look, who'd ever thought a dumb old country boy like me be up here doing this? You know, all the things I've done, God can bring you through, people. Amen. He can get you through your struggle. He can get you through the crap that you're in. There's no doubt in my mind. He, he done it for me. He can do it for anybody. Amen. Has anybody, you got a song y'all want to sing? I have to put it on y'all again. <laughs> If you need prayer for anything, if you're struggling, if you need anything, if you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, uh, it says all you got to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Come forth. We'll pray for you. In case anybody wants to come up. I didn't know that this would come about today the way it has. Lord, laid this song on my heart. I've known it a long time, but... Uh, means a lot to me. Today I went by to the place where I used to go. Today I saw that same old crowd that I knew before. When they asked me what had happened, I tried to tell them, thanks to Calvary, I don't come here anymore. Thanks to Calvary, I'm not the man I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different than before. While the tears ran down my face, I tried to tell them, thanks to Calvary, I don't come here anymore. Then we went by to the house where we used to live, and my little girl ran and hid behind the door. I said, honey, never fear, you've got a new daddy now, and thanks to Calvary, we don't live here anymore. Well, thanks to Calvary, I am not that man I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different than before. And when they ask me what had happened, I try to tell them that thanks to Calvary, I don't live here anymore. Yes, thanks to Calvary, we don't live here anymore. I think that right now we got some prayer going on over here. And I think everybody in here that I know knows how to pray. I don't know what they're praying for, but I think if we could just gather around that area right there. Y'all, come on. Just come on over. You want them to pray. Just raise up. Raise up these folks in there. Their need right now, Lord. We know that they have a need.